this right here is Euler's identity. Now you might be thinking, let's break it down. E is Euler's number, whose exponential function, or e to the x, has gradients equal to its y-coordinates. So when its y-coordinate is 1, its gradient is also 1. Next up is pi, the ratio between half a circle circumference and its radius. It's also used to measure angles and radians, where the angle equals the ratio between the arc length and the radius. Lastly, the imaginary number i, the square root of negative 1. And that's literally all i is. It's all I am! Explanation time! Here's a typical high school explanation, but it's quite useless without knowing calculus. So let's first learn how to raise real numbers to i. When combining real and imaginary numbers, you get complex numbers, which reside in the two-dimensional complex plane. Now, try plotting real numbers raised to i. The only commonality is that they are all one unit away from the origin. They have a magnitude of 1. It's just that they are rotated at different angles from the real axis. Thus, we can express these numbers as cosine theta plus i sine theta. But why is the magnitude 1 and how do we find the angle? Recall that i is in a completely different dimension where real numbers don't belong. <laughs> They're incompatible. It's like, if you bring dollars to the jungle, it loses its value because animals don't use dollars, dollars don't belong there. But when a real number is raised to an imaginary number, instead of losing its value, the value sort of gets cancelled out. Also, a raised to i is the same as a raised to 0 plus i. Since the real exponent, which is compatible with the real number base, is 0, the magnitude is a raised to 0, which is 1. But sir, the angle! You see, every point in this exponential graph contains three pieces of information. The gradient, an x-coordinate, and a y-coordinate. The gradient is the only two-dimensional piece of information, compatible with the two-dimensional nature of angles and complex numbers. Let's say that we have a gradient here, and this is the run, the horizontal component, and this is the rise, the vertical component. Now we'll curve it such that both ends of the vertical component is the same distance away from this point right here. Now it becomes an arc. And notice that the ratio between the vertical component and the horizontal component is now the ratio between the length of the arc and the radius. The gradient is the angle! Gradients and angles are always best friends. But with an infinity of gradients to choose and the curve, how do we know which one? We know that the x-coordinate represents real number exponents. This should remind you of the complex plane, where the y-axis is imaginary. So think of y-coordinates as imaginary exponents. Thus, we look at the gradients at the point whose y-coordinate is a coefficient of the imaginary exponent. Remember that for e, the y-coordinates are equal to the gradients, hence e to the i or e to the 1i has a gradient of 1 and an angle of 1 radian, while e to the pi i has a gradient of pi and an angle of pi radians, or 180 degrees, making e to the pi i cos pi plus i sine pi, which is... Negative 1! Oh, he did it! He did it! Yeah, sorry about that. Just really impressed by how a combination of irrationality, complexity, and negativity can be the most beautiful thing ever discovered in mathematics.